Right now, it's the best of Groucho. Here he is, the one, the only... Well, here I am again with a chance for each of our couples to win $2,000, and if any of them get lucky, they might win 10,000. Ducky, come down here. Now, this is the secret word. If any of our couples say during the next half hour, they'll win an extra $100. Okay, Duck, out of it at you. All right, George, who's first for the soda? Groucho Nancy Mason and Danny Wheel are on deck, so would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word, and you each get an extra $50. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Perry Mason and Danny Wheel, eh? Where are you from, Perry? Uh, the name is Nancy Mason. Oh, Nancy Mason, yes. huh? Are you from Mason City, Iowa? Uh, no, Groucho, I was born right here in Hollywood. One really? of those unusual people. It wasn't on the show, uh, was it? <laughs> was it on You okay. Asked For It? I didn't ask for it, I'm afraid, but I'm darn glad I'm here. Oh, well, I am, too. I think you're a very attractive-looking girl. You're Danny Weil, huh? Uh, Will is the name, but just call me Danny. <laughs> Why do, you, why do you spell it uh, W-E-I-L if it's wheel? Eh? Is that the front wheel or the back wheel? Well, some people refer it as the stepney, as we call it, and that's the one they stick on the back as a spare. You know, the... I don't usually get confused this early in the proceedings. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, where are you from, uh, Danny? Uh, London. London, huh? Mm -hmm. That's a very real, genuine English accent, isn't it? Huh? Oh, where, uh, whereabouts in London? In Soho? Uh, no, I come from Stepney, the East End part of London. Oh. Are you, are you a, what they call a cockney? Oh, I'm a uh, real genuine, as you say in the States, a dyed in the wool cockney, uh, born very close to Bow Bells. You ever hear this, mm. uh, it's a great big shy man if she belongs to me. You're thinking of Harry Champion. Yes, and he, he sings, I'd let her know it was who. Mm. Putting on a blokey that is six mm. foot four and are only four foot two. Yes, sir. Why, they hadn't been married a man for more when underneath her from goes Jim. Ain't it a pity that the likes of ah should put upon the likes of him? You got it. I went off kind of half cockney then, didn't I? Yeah, 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 you were doing all right. And half Welsh, too. <laughs> Now, what sort of work did you do uh, uh, in what used to be merry old England? I was a watchmaker over there. A watchmaker, huh? Did you come from a family of... Uh, yes, what? we've... Uh, well, my family's been in the trade for about 400 years. Uh -huh. Where well, was I... your place of business? Was it on the main stem? Uh, <laughs> the, main the main stem. What are we... Are we uh... Oh, you mean the main road? Yeah. <laughs> That's a trouble. I can't get used to this American, uh, uh, yeah. you know. The American what? You know, you know, the... the American. <laughs> I didn't think we had any of that left over here. <laughs> now, Nancy, what about you? Are, are you married? Groucho, I'm, I'm a widow. Oh, well, I, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, anyone as attractive as you won't remain single very long, I'm sure of that. Have you got someone dangling on the string right now? No, there's absolutely no one. No one, eh? Well, what do you attribute this to? Uh, well, actually, my, my children are, are sort of anxious about the whole thing. Uh, but what kind of a man would you be interested in? Well, first of all, he has to meet the entr entrance exam, which is walking into the house. And the examiners of the board, of course, are my two young girls. They, they have to uh, Approve pass it? the test, yes. And how old are these children? Three and five. You may never get married under these conditions. <laughs> I said eventually. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. But I would like to say that, above all, uh, he has to be a traveling man. Uh, not a salesman, but a traveling man. You want a man who's interested in traveling? Yes, yeah. indeed. Here, I'm trying to land a husband for you, and you're <laughs> trying to get rid of him before you've even got him. <laughs> you want a man who travels, you should nail one of the boys on the South Pole expedition. They're going to be gone for three years, I guess. <laughs> Uh, speaking of time, Mr. Wilde, I'd like to hear some more of your, of your Cockney accent. Uh, what should we talk about? What is your favorite subject? Uh, sailing. Sailing? Yeah. <laughs> no, boats. Little sailing boats. No, bites, you mean, don't you? Huh? <laughs> Why do you say sailing? Well, 
I didn't. I said sailing. Sailing, yes. <laughs> it's S-A-I-L, isn't it? You don't say you go to a fire sale, do you? Yeah, there's a difference between sailing and sailing. Yes, there is. There's the yeah. whole Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're interested in sailing, why, why, uh, why didn't you buy a boat? I did. When I, way back, you know, I started off with a late foot uh, dinghy, you see. A dinghy? What's a dinghy? Oh, a little tiny boat, uh, yeah. you know. How do you spell it? Yeah? D-I-N-G-H-Y. I see. Oh, well, a small boat. I got it right, didn't I? All right. Oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> So what happened, what happened with this dinghy? Oh, the first thing, I'd never done any sailing before, and I got, put one foot in, and went to put the other one in, and then uh, it didn't happen that way. I went head first in the drink. <laughs> so what happened then? Well, I, I started to build a boat, and I spent four and a half years doing it, and finally finished up with a 40-foot sloop. And uh, then I decided I'd shove off on a little shakedown cruise, <clears throat> decided I'd push off around the world with it. Mm -hmm. uh, how far did you get? Did I you... got about 400 miles off the coast of uh, Australia there. And, really? Uh, yeah. yeah. And so what happened? Well, I was tootling along minding my own business and reading my uh, fa very famous piece. You were of... what? I was tootling along, you know, sailing along. Oh. Yeah. I was sitting in the cockpit minding my own business and reading one of your very famous American classics, you know, The Life of Mamie Stover. <laughs> And uh, then, next thing I knew, the boat stopped. Well, I knew we hadn't got any place, and there was no policeman out there in the hand-up sort of thing. And then I realized I'd run onto an uncharted reef. Mm -hmm. I was over there for about 24 hours, hanging up the mast. Uh, then well, you've I... had some very exciting times. Uh, what are your present plans, Magellan? <laughs> <clears throat> Well, I'm over here, over in the States now, and uh, I'm rather hoping that we'll find somebody, a sponsor or something, that'll help me out with a, another boat or maybe a series of sponsors mm -hmm. that can uh, use the, the idea. And your, your uh, seamanship, too, would come in very yeah, handy. Yeah, it would come in handy. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, it's good for Macintoshes and Galoshes sort of thing, you know. Well, you seem like a very adventurous chap, Danny. I bet you've got a girl in every port, have you? Well, I don't know. A lot of people have a lot of fun with that way, but every time I get near a girl, you know, she... I don't know, I get sort of embarrassed a bit. And Why is that? Uh... Well, I, I don't, don't seem to find anything to talk about. <laughs> well, you've led a pretty dull life, I don't know. <laughs> Say, I just happened to... You said you were one of the men who was interested in traveling. What about Danny? You could marry him and never see him again. <laughs> Now, suppose, suppose you had a date with Mutiny on the Bounty here. Uh, what would you talk to him about? Well, I think the first thing I would do would uh, be to start asking him about his adventures. I really would, because I think they sound terribly fascinating. You think that would make good conversation? Well, right? it certainly would on his part. Mm. And I'm an awfully good listener. I really am. In that case, Nancy, you should go out with me, and then later you can talk about your adventures. <laughs> Well, you're a lovely couple, and I'd like to continue talking to you two, but the time has come for you to win some money. At least I hope you win a lot of money. Well, not too much, a little money, eh? <laughs> All right, now, from our list of 22 categories, you selected general information. I'm going to ask you some questions. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. And by the way, the next time you contemplate a trip around the world, will you do me a favor and take Fenneman with you? <laughs> <laughs> it's a deal. <laughs> All right, here we go. What do you call the distance between the front and rear axles of a car, of an automobile? What is it called? There's a name for it. Mm. Oh, you're too terrible. I should know that. Between the front and rear axles of a car. Yeah, that's got me beaten anyway. It's the wheel bias. I know. <laughs> or as they say in England, wheel base. <laughs> you got two, one you one. have uh, one wrong. Oh. Don't miss the next now, one or the, the game is over. One. What cabinet post is in charge of the Coast Guard? What cabinet post? Which of the cabinets is in charge of the Coast Guard? That's an American angle. That's a little more in your department. It's got me beaten. Well, no, I think well, I've had that. Well, well, you've really got me beaten there. That's something in the American line of uh, thought. Well, it's the Secretary of the mm. Treasury. Well, that's uh, two, and out there two we go. in a row wrong. Oh, well, yes. I'm sorry you got through so fast. You're such an attractive couple. 
We, we, we don't want you right to... You should have asked the right questions. Well, we had 22 categories, and apparently you chose this one. All right, here it is. Get this right, and you get $100. And please, no help from the audience. What singer is the star of the Perry Como show? <laughs> the Grand Perry. <laughs> General Grant is right. I'm sorry you didn't win, boy. You're such a nice couple. But thanks okay, anyway for fine. being with us. You bet your life. Huh? Nice meeting you guys. Pagato, um, Mrs. Melba Taylor is waiting to talk to you. And her partner is, um, well, if I... Uh, if I tell you his name, you won't believe it. I don't believe anything you say. <laughs> so I'll let you find out. You can ask him yourself when he comes out here. So, folks, you come out, please, and meet Groucho Marx, please. <laughs> Welcome to your Betcha Life. Thank you. Say the secret word, and you each get an extra $50. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Now, Melba, what's all this about your name? What, what is it? Melba Taylor. Oh, what's your name? <clears throat> My name is Safety First, Groucho. <laughs> safety First? Yes, sir, Safety First. That's my name. Well, shoemaker, stick to your legs. Huh? <laughs> Is that your real name? Yes, sir. Oh. My real name. Oh, that's kind of a curious name. I can understand the last name being first, but why do they ever saddle you with a name like Safety? Well, uh, I really don't know why, but uh, Father was a very jocular sort and uh, a, a great sense of humor. Well, what you're saying is that you're, you're one of your father's little jokes, is that it? I certainly am. <laughs> the, well, name, uh, the name Groucho is of German origin. It was Firster at one time, and over the years it was reduced to F-I-R-S-T, First. Oh. Where are you from, Safety? I uh, was born in Conneaut Lake, Pennsylvania, a very small town in northwestern part of Pennsylvania, a summer resort. Later moved to Meadville, the county seat, and from there to Pittsburgh for pharmacy school. You're a pharmacist? Yes, I am. You're uh, Melba Taylor, is that right? Yes. <coughs> you must be the toast of the town, aren't you, Melba? Yeah. That's a very old joke, Melba. I loved it. Well, you're a peach, Melba. <laughs> <laughs> That's even older. Now you've got to forgive me twice. <laughs> what kind of work does your husband do? I assume you're married, huh? Mm-hmm. He works at Square D Electrical <coughs> Company. He does? Mm -hmm. What is he, the head square? <laughs> How long has no, he been with very him? intelligent. Is he? How long has he been with the Square D Company? Oh, just about 16 years. 16 years? Mm -hmm. well, what does he do there? He works. I don't know exactly. You don't know what he does, and he's been there 16 years? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Have you ever I'm... tried asking him? <laughs> well, I guess it'd be a good idea. I might. I don't know. Well, it's always a pleasure to meet a woman who takes an interest in her husband's work. <laughs> How do you know he isn't a safe cracker? Uh, he's a good, dependable man, and he goes to work, and he's a very good father, and he's very nice. <laughs> how long have you been married, Melba? Uh, 16 years in April. Mm -hmm. well, how do you and your husband get along? Do you have lots of interests in common? We get along very, very well. And you never ask him anything. He's hardly ever home. No, I don't. He breakfast, and he leaves right after. <laughs> what was that? I say he won't talk before breakfast, and he leaves right after. <laughs> then I never see him. <laughs> well, what do you give him for breakfast? Um, bacon and eggs. Every morning? And orange juice. Uh -huh. uh, once in a while, Maybe he, he doesn't like oatmeal. bacon and eggs. <laughs> Why don't you give him some safe crackers? He likes oatmeal, but it's easier to fry eggs than it is to boil the water and put the oatmeal in. <laughs> <laughs> well, you certainly know how to keep a husband, all right. <laughs> I mean, out of the house. <laughs> What, what does you do? What does he do, your husband? <clears throat> he, uh, he's very interested in horse racing, and he goes to uh, horse races in the daytime, and he works at night. He doesn't sleep at all, huh? <laughs> uh, he doesn't sleep very much, and I sleep a lot, and I'm always sleepy. <laughs> Have you tried cooking the oatmeal for him the night before? <laughs> he wouldn't have done that. <laughs> now, safety, uh, it's, uh, are, are you married? Yes, I am, Groucho. What is your husband? No, I'm... <laughs> How did you meet Mrs. Feist? And is this the Feist, Mrs. Feist? No, this is the third Mrs. First, Groucho. <laughs> I met this What Mrs. about first. the first Mrs. Uh, Feist? Uh, the first Mrs. First uh, passed on. Oh. I'm pretty nosy, aren't you? Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the only way you can find out That's anything. Right. I always tell my daughter, you know, she's ten, as they ask questions. She really can ask them. Yes, she can. She asked me one the other day that uh, I'm never going to answer. <laughs>
Well, let's get back to the safety part of your name, safety. Just how safe are you? Do you live up to your name? Well, I try to, Groucho, and I think I've been uh, reasonably successful. Have you ever received a traffic ticket? Uh, numerous ones, Groucho. The first I got was on uh, Figueroa for having a foggy windshield. That was an ordinance violation. And that's the... You're uh, not allowed um, to have a foggy windshield on Figueroa? Not. not <laughs> what did the cop say? Well, the first thing, of course, he asked me my name, and I said, safety first, and he said, oh, yeah? <laughs> You got off to a flying start there, didn't you? Those Figueroa cops are very tough, you know. Now, Melba, you say you're a housewife? Mm-hmm. Well, are you content with running a good home for your husband, or do you have any further ambitions? I'd like to be a good lyricist. A lyricist? You mean play one of those things? <clears throat> no, I'd like to write words to music. I just can't stand being a nobody. I'd like to do something. Well, uh, have you anything else that you could do that could possibly bring you fame and fortune? Are you an expert at anything? You there know, isn't anything I do well. There isn't anything you do well? No, but I've just got to do something well, because I've just got to get my name on a sheet <laughs> of music or something. Well, that's where we're different, you see. I don't do anything, but I do it brilliantly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to help you, Melba, but I don't know how. Maybe you could be a famous comedian. Uh, can you tell jokes? I like to tell jokes. Uh, could you rip off a joke, and then we'll decide if you could be famous? Just a short joke, huh? Uh, Betty Furness um, opened a refrigerator door, and there sat a little rabbit. And she said, well, what are you doing here? And the little rabbit says, is this a Westing house? And she said, yes, it is. And the little rabbit said, well, I'm just Westing. <laughs> You know, you, you don't often see a talking rabbit in a refrigerator. <laughs> Would you like to try that same joke and use Hassan <coughs> Pfeffer instead of rabbit? <laughs> well, that, that was a pretty good joke, Betty. But let's not make any snap decisions. Let's be sure we uncover every side of your talent. What else do you do? Do you sing or play the piano? A little. My favorite is the trombone. <laughs> you, you play it well? I don't do anything well, but I'm trying, but I really think I write pretty good lyrics. If someone would just do the music, I've written quite a few. Meekin, have you got a trombone in that miserable group out there? <laughs> I sure. Could you send up a trombone? <laughs> now, Melba, this may be your chance to make a name for yourself. <laughs> trombone is coming up. Let's see you play. Now, give yourself some elbow room. I tell you, you go over there, Melba. So this uh, slide doesn't hit me in the kisser, huh? Thank you. What are you going to play? Anything that the orchestra might know? Uh, oh, um, I don't know. One of your own. You don't know what? It's just coming out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Now, what was that tune you played? Uh, Buckle Down and Saki. Oh, is that what it was? It shows you how much I know about good music. <laughs> I thought it was Tchaikovsky's uh, Variations on a Theme by Red Grange. You see? <laughs> well, you're a lovely couple, and if you don't get married immediately, you're both making a big mistake. <laughs> Let's see if you can win any money in the quiz. Now, you've selected from our list of 20 categories popular music of the last 20 years. Is that right? Hi. <laughs> You're Watch yourself around. On television. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so out of the mouths of babes and trombone players comes the truth. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Cab Calloway, otherwise known as Jack Meekin, is going to play some tunes, and you name them. <laughs> if you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. Now, one answer before you answer, before you... Decide. You decide between you and then answer. 
This is the category you've chosen, isn't it? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it? Oh, we've lost her. Uh... <laughs> Would you like to kiss Mr. Fenneman? <laughs> I thought you played the trombone very well. Uh, <laughs> I know you, sir. I would have. <laughs> would you like to kiss an old drugstore proprietor? You mean him? Yeah. Yeah, I would. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Apparently, she has no standards at all. She'd <laughs> probably even kiss me if I asked her. Yeah, I would. <laughs> you would, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Let inflation come, who cares? <laughs> All right, identify this one. Okay, cab. What is it? The very thought of you? It sure is. The very thought of you is right. Now you you got one. One right, three more right, you'll have a thousand dollars. What's this tune? Uh... <laughs> What is it? What's behind the green door? That's, that's close enough. Yeah. I don't know what's behind it, but it's green door. Green door. Anyway. You're halfway to $1,000. Two more right, and it's yours. <laughs> now, give me the name of this. <laughs> Once in a while. <laughs> Once in a while? That's the title of it. <laughs> you have free right. I'd like to give you the money right now, but you have to get one more. <laughs> All right, listen, I guess it's spring. It's rhubarb and everything does this, you know. <laughs> spring in the air, George. I think that's it. No, let's see you spring in the air. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen to this and tell me what it is. What is it? How high the moon? Take the money, you want it. Uh... <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You got four in a row. You don't mind if I snap a little no, of your dialogue, right. huh? Now you can keep, uh, you, I tell you, you can go to do the rest of it. <laughs> the rest of the speech. Well, it. you got four in a row. Yeah. You see, you can either keep your thousand yeah. dollars. <laughs> This is real life. You don't often see that on a quiz show. <laughs> love comes to George Fenneman. Uh, you try later on to double your money or something. I don't know. <laughs> well, Mel Melba's husband is at the racetrack while <laughs> Well, you won $1,000. Now, you can keep it and quit, or you can come back later and try to double your money. You may even get a crack at 10000 So go over there and sit it down, and I'll send George over a little bit. And thanks, Mary. Looks like you and I are washed up. George is, George is away in the lead. Think about it. So in just one minute, we'll see whether our last couple will take a chance on winning $10,000. All right, George, let's find out what our last couple has decided. All right, Melba Taylor, and safety first, would you come back, please? Well, there's your love life. Yeah. Now, you won $1,000. Now, you have a chance to win a lot more, perhaps 10. Or you can stop here and keep your 1,000. If you decide to go for the big money and fail, you wind up with a total of 500. Now, what do you propose to do? Well, we've decided to take what we have and be very happy about it. Well, I, I think you may be making a very shrewd decision. I don't know. That's your privilege. Congratulations for winning the thousand, and thanks for being on the show. You bet your life. Next week, You Bet Your Life will be brought to you by the makers of Prom Home Permanent.
This is my family album. And this is my brother Harpo. He's always chasing the girls. But no more. Now he's telling the girls about creamy prom. Because prom home permanent is a waving cream. Leaves your hair soft like a silk. <gasps> Look at the way the waver. She's a bouncer back every time. Hey, lady, wouldn't you like your wave behavior like this? You'll get a creamy prom. Right, Hoppo? Tonight, You Bet Your Life has been brought to you by your DeSoto Plymouth dealer who right now is holding a super sale circus. See him tomorrow for a money-saving deal on a 1957 DeSoto. Friends, go in and see a DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell him Groucho sent you. This is George Fenneman signing off with a reminder from the National Safety Council. Look right and left for traffic while crossing. And watch sharply for turning cars.